Welcome everyone. This is Ask a Scientist and I'm the scientist today that I'm going to be um, chatting with Hazel and I'm a scientist. I work out of the Minnesota office for Science from Scientist. Um, so Hazel, um, anything you want to say about yourself or something fun that you've been doing while we've been spending a lot of time at home lately? My name is Hazel. I am 10 years old. I'm in fourth grade and I like riding bikes. Awesome. Me too. We've been doing a lot of bike riding lately. We have some questions that we're going to talk about so you can just launch in. Okay. So the first question, how many types of plants are there? That's a really good question. So plants are divided up into different groups and the most specific group is a species. So that's the narrowest definition of, a, of any organism is a species. And we think there's about 350,000 known plant species, but there's probably a lot more that scientists haven't discovered yet. And there are certainly more that scientists are debating, but there's, um, we think there's at least that many. How did you become interested in plants? I became interested in plants after spending some time in these really beautiful forests in California. Um, I studied redwood forests and I spent some time in really, really old forests. So they're old growth, um, they have huge trees, really beautiful plants, and they've been relatively undisturbed from um, people. And so just spending time in those forests and having grown up in the Midwest, seeing these huge, enormous trees, it really made me want to study those plants and those habitats more. Cool. Um, how long does it take for a plant or animal to become a fossil? Yeah, that's actually a, a interesting question because a fossil is, in my, in the way that I define it, is essentially anything that has to be dug up that is some sign of past life. So for the amount of time it takes for something to be buried, um, like one of the fossils that I study, it's a, a tiny fossil, so we call it a microfossil, which is pollen that can be buried in a matter of months to years, but for something to go through this process of fossilization, which means that it would actually become a rock, that would take tens of thousands of years. So it can take a really long time for it to become a rock, but it doesn't take as long for something to become buried. What is the oldest fossil that has been discovered? Um, the Earth, just for some context, is about four and a half billion years old, and the oldest fossil that's been discovered is a microbe, which just means it's a microscopic organism, so a really tiny organism that's either in a single cell or it lives with some other cells in a colony, and those have been preserved in rocks that were 3.7 billion years old. So really, really old. It's sort of hard for our brains to even imagine how old that, something like that is. What is the biggest fossil that you've ever seen? So I, for my research, I've studied really tiny fossils, so fossils that you need a microscope to see. So I think the biggest fossil um, that I've seen just as a as a person interested in fossils would probably be at a museum. Um, I have been to the Natural History Museum in Washington, DC, and so it would probably be one of those big dinosaurs. What does a plant fossil look like? So plant fossils can be really variable. It can either be like an imprint that's been left on a rock um, or it can be a part of a plant. Um, 
what I study specifically is um, pollen, which is produced from trees. So sometimes in pollen season, you might see a lot of pollen um, on the ground. And so there are these little tiny microscopic organisms, but you can sort of think of like what you would imagine with a plant that you see growing in your yard. It could be just a portion of that um, that's been buried and then left in that area for um, you know, a, a long time, or eventually it, it did become some sort of rock fossil. Um, how has pollen changed over time? Um, well, pollen has, it hasn't changed as much over time as plants have themselves. But in general, both pollen and plants have sort of changed to adapt to their environment. Um, so they become more competitive. So there's some pollen that have, um, it looks sort of like Mickey Mouse ears that they're filled with air. So it lets them fly in the wind. Um, so that's one way that pollen has become um, more competitive between species. And as far as plants, um, plants have adapted over time to be more competitive depending on their environment. So like in the desert where there's hardly any rain, plants have adapted to hold water in their leaves so they can go a really long time without getting any water. So they just develop these different characteristics that make them more competitive. Why study pollen? That's a good question. Um, not that many people study pollen <laughs> um, because it, it can be a little time intensive, but um, because plants provide the habitat that we all live in and the foundation of the food chain, it is important to study plants so we can protect and preserve our environment. And pollen is cool because it can tell us something about the trees that were growing in the past. And so we're basically able to use pollen as a lens or a tool to tell what trees were there in the past. And then we might be able to say something about what the climate was like in the past and how those trees changed with climate. And with how much climate is changing now, it can really help us make some decisions about the future. Why is it important to study plants? Well, I think plants are, I mean, I find them interesting, but they, like I um, mentioned, they make life on earth possible. They capture energy from the sun through a process called photosynthesis. And then we're able to eat those plants and then animals eat animals that eat those plants. So without plants, we wouldn't be able to live on earth. So. Um, it's a good thing to to be aware of how they how they work and function. That's all my questions. Thanks for meeting with me. Awesome. Thank you so much. It was really fun chatting with you. And for all of you watching, if you're interested in other videos, check out our YouTube channel and other um, and other things we post through Science from Scientist. So thanks, Hazel. Bye.